says you need a vacation for a view like this. Or, I wish there was a place to get in shape. Try getting on the beaten path. Discover an ever-expanding network of trails and greenways. Some quintessential southern beauty. Or romp through the woods in a magical land between the rivers. There's more to explore than you ever imagined. Beyond the swing sets, Breck, we are more than a playground. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make Phase 3 the best it can possibly be. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After 5 Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Welcome as we start week nine of the Roger Kaylor Show. Coach, you got to get more sun these days, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get a lot more sun. Vitamin D deficiency, Coach. TK, affectionately by those of us that are in this business. Tommy Chrysan sitting in for the coach this week. It's been a minute, my friend. It's so good to see you. You know, Coach called me the other day and wanted to know if I could come pinch hit for him. And, right. Uh, and I said I'd love to, and I really want to work with Clarence because we, we hadn't done it in a while. Did you tell him the same thing you told me when he asked could you pinch hit about – how you never got to pinch hit in college? <laughs> I never did bat in college. I was a left-handed pitcher, and we'll leave it at that. All right. So bring us all up to speed. What have you been doing these days? Because like you mentioned, it, it's been a minute since you and I have had the pleasure of working together. Yeah, I'm really busy. I, I got a podcast, Talking Sports with TK, just uh -huh. past 35,000 listens and downloads. Uh, awesome. It's not quite three years old. Variety uh -huh. of topics. Uh, it's available on all your major platforms. Okay. Just search for Talking Sports with TK. Uh -huh. And then uh, – uh, got a partner, and we got a website called MeatAndPotatoesUSA.com. MeatAndPotatoesUSA.com. It's not a gambling site. Right. We sell information. We have four sports consultants who, as of this minute, are hitting 61% of their picks against the spread. Nice. We got uh, Andy picks long shots. He's winning. We're doing really well. Meat and potatoes. You can buy a pick, uh -huh. and if it don't work, we give you a free pick till it works. We even every now and then we throw in a money back guarantee. Right. Uh, World Series game six tonight. Uh -huh. There's a money back guarantee if the pick's not correct. Uh, sports betting is exploding in the you USA. Better believe it. And meatandpotatoesusa.com is just coming to the party right. with a website. You know, Clarence, for years I was associated with, with my dear friend Dave Scandaliato in Las Vegas, who mm -hmm. unfortunately passed away right before the pandemic. Right. And it was a, a site similar to that, and I was selling picks, and we were doing well, and, and unfortunately Dave left us. I uh, didn't plan on that, but that right. happened. Right. And so then I kind of, this is a tribute to him, and then the same concept, parallel with the fact that sports betting is blowing up. I was on hand at the sports book at La Bears yesterday for the grand right. opening. Right. Uh, so yeah, it, it's here. It, it, whether you like it or not, and you don't have to bet. Right. And, but again, we're not a gambling site. Right. You, you try to bet with us, we're, nope, nope, but we'll we got consultants mm -hmm. who will sell you their thoughts. And if it's not right, we'll give you we'll give you free picks till you get it right. You're gonna win money. Yeah. I, I will be the first to admit, TK, when um Gaming came to Louisiana. I was against it. Um, I, I, I grew up in a household where my father 
never let any of his kids play games of chance that he felt, despite the fact that he was a hell of a poker player, that he thought could lead to problems down the road. Now, that being said, I've since evolved on the issue because as a conservative, <gasps> believe it or not, as a conservative, I had to come to the realization that these are grown people and they work hard for their money. If they decide this is what they want to do with their disposable income, who am I to tell someone what they can or cannot do with their money? I don't want anybody telling me what I can do with my disposable income, so where would I get off telling someone that's grown and works for their money what they can do with theirs. Well, I think a key thing you said is disposable income. Uh -huh. You have to be smart. I mean, right. you still got to pay your bills, support your family. Hopefully. You know, whatever you got going on. Right. So it's all about managing money. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I went for a long time and did not bet. Right. God, I'm like, you can't win. Because you got to be lucky, and it's very hard to win consistently. Right. And then I you know, started all this podcast and meat and potatoes, USA.com. I said, well, you know. I got to put my money where my mouth is, well, but I'm, yeah. I'm shooting you straight. I bet five bucks or ten bucks a uh -huh. game because I'm managing money and I can afford to lose right. that much money right. every day if I have to. Uh -huh. You know, But that way when I say, hey, my money's on whomever, right. it truly is. You just don't have to know how much You because know? yeah. most people aren't large bettors. Uh -huh. Most people are somewhere in that 20 buck to 200 buck range you right. know every now and then we hear about mattress mac and houston putting two million dollars <laughs> on the astros i mean right. that, that's there's two million other people don't bet close to that so where do you see in louisiana now that it's finally underway and the sports obsession in in louisiana culture where do you see sports betting going I mean, I think it's going to explode. I'm just mm -hmm. hoping that the powers that be do the right stuff with the money. You right. know, like the whole Powerball lottery thing was supposed to help education. Yeah. Eh, okay. It did. It didn't. We, that's a topic for another day. Yeah. So let, let's pour the resources back into Louisiana, back into mm -hmm. the kids, back into the youth of all of our communities. Amen. The youth of our state, because that's truly the future. Yeah. And, you know, we have to do more for kids. I'm involved in a lot of youth sport activities mm -hmm. still to this day. I've always ha had my hand in that because it's important. So let's hope that as gambling explodes, that somehow it's benefiting the younger people. Yeah. You know, to and our education department, which you know we have to be better at. This is a, a, a natural segue uh, into the LSU Bama matchup this weekend. Anywhere from twenty nine to thirty point underdog for the Tigers. What does that say to you about the state of the LSU program right now? It's trending in the wrong direction, Duh. which is why <laughs> Scott Woodward decided to make a change. Okay, mm -hmm. you know the 2019 season was a season for a lifetime, literally. Right. right. May not ever happen again at any school. True. You're going to go 15 and 0, win the Heisman, and dominate people. Everybody uh -huh. at Auburn that year, they right. ran out the building. Okay. So, and then after that, I'll say it. Coach Orgeron quit working. Now, the pandemic, which he, on Monday, I listened to his press conference, he was asked how much did that affect. Right. He said, I'm not here to make excuses. Everybody had to deal with the pandemic. True. I respected that answer. Mm -hmm. But he stopped working. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he made some bad hires with coordinators. Yeah. Um, they missed on some recruits. And in the SEC, if you're not getting better, you're falling way behind. Yes, sir. Scott Woodward recognized that. He mm -hmm. knows a change was needed. And I'd tell you, if you could pour truth serum down Ed Orgeron's throat, he'd tell you a change was needed, too. Because he's smart enough. He's been around. He's been oh, yeah. at, at Ole Miss, Southern Cal, Miami. Uh -huh. He coached at Tennessee. He coached for the Saints for a year. Some people don't know that. But uh, so, you know, he, he knows it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that, but to be 29, 30 point underdogs to Alabama. That just shows you the difference in the two programs right yeah. now. When two years ago, LSU beat them in Tuscaloosa. That's right. That's right. Beat them. Well, we have some highlights from games earlier this season. As, as Tommy and I continue our conversation, we'll, we'll roll those highlights. Speaking of Coach O's press conference this week, he said during the bye week, they figured out that they were too predictable. <laughs> Is that the problem in a nutshell, you just figured that part out. There's a nice run. 
Yeah, that's a big part of the problem. Just like when he admitted that the year before hiring coordinators without a face-to-face -face interview, right. albeit in a pandemic, it could have still been done. But no, the problem is the coaching. I think LSU's got a tremendous amount of talent. There's mm -hmm. a lot of really good football players wearing LSU uniforms. But the coaching last year with Linehan on offense, Pelini on defense, it didn't work. Right. Okay. Yeah, obviously, the worst defense in LSU football history. Then this year, you had guys training on the job. Mm -hmm. Clarence, I, I, I had at one time a cassette tape of the first high school football game I ever announced. Uh -huh. It was the most pathetic, awful thing you could ever. I burned it so nobody would ever have to hear it. But I was learning on the job. So right, thirty plus, almost well, 33, 34 years ago. Right, and I'm sure the first day you ever did a radio show, it probably wasn't real slick. Uh, wasn't the best. Okay, no. so LSU asked Jake Pete to come in there and be an offensive coordinator, and he couldn't handle the job. Right, can't he couldn't do it. Now, I can cite a dozen examples of proof that he couldn't do it. Yeah. So then, you know, players aren't dumb. Oh no, players know. You know, the 2019 team knew. Mm -hmm. They were going to win football games. Yeah. Knew they were going to dominate. Yeah, this team, they got no clue, and they don't have they don't haven't bought into the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Jake Peets might be a great offensive coordinator one day. He's not right now. Yeah, it shows. And and this is not supposed to be a place where you learn your craft. No, no, you don't do that at LSU. Not you at don't LSU. Don't do that in the SEC. No, you don't do that in any Power Five conference. Mm -hmm. You know, there's reasons why. Guys are coaches elsewhere, and then they climb that ladder. Yep. You know, and that's just part of being hard work and doing things right. But for LSU to be a 29-point favorite, give or take a half point, depending on where you shop. Right. That's just, you know, that's basically saying that they're telling you LSU does not have a chance. Now, as you and I talked about before, you still got to line up and play because there's oh, always yeah. that chance, and uh -huh. we've seen those upsets over the years on the landscape of college football when you say, man, I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ask I didn't Iowa. think LSU would beat Florida this year. True. I didn't True. see that one coming. I was dead wrong on that one. So, so that being said, what will the Tigers have to do to at least look respectable against Alabama? Hope that Alabama doesn't get there till halftime. <laughs> Lock. Put a padlock on the <laughs> locker room door, right? Yeah, yeah, like Alabama, the game's really at 7.30, and then they could start at 6, right. they get a little lead, <laughs> and then Bama show up. No, I, I mean, never say never, but I right. can't see how. Now, Alabama might not cover that point spread, but I can't see that LSU will walk off that field with a win. Uh -huh. Stranger things have happened. Oh, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm always asked for my opinion. I don't think they have a shot to win the game. Wow. Well, Miles Brennan this week informing the program that uh, it was nice, appreciate the opportunity, but uh, I want to go someplace where I feel I have a shot to play and, and further my chances of a possible NFL career. What do you make of his departure at this point? Uh, it's not a surprise. I mean, he's battling a knee injury. We learned that on top of the other stuff. And it, the stars just never lined up for him at Never LSU. did. Feel sorry uh, for the Never young man. lined up the, the, the hit at Missouri after he had pretty decent games at the beginning of that season. It just never lined up. So, I, I you know, but he's a talented guy. Good kid. I, I, I think, you know, somebody's going to say, hey, we need a quarterback for a year. Mm -hmm. That's all he's got left. You know, come play for us, right. even if that's an, an FCS school or wherever it might be. I mean, he, you know, he's not going to go to, you know, an, another SEC school or right. Power 5 school. But, you know, all players want a chance. You want to have an opportunity. And there's going to be a school that mm -hmm. gives him an opportunity, and it's up to him to make the most of it. What do you think the mindset – of the assistant coaching staff at LSU is right now, Tom? Well, it, they're supposed to, you know, work hard, do your job every day, mm -hmm. okay, and knowing that, you know, the next coach may or may not keep you around. Now, some may not want to stay around. Right. But you got to, you got to, it's a, it's a double edged sword. You have to do your job you're being paid for. Because mm -hmm. you don't want the reputation to get out that, boy, you know, when they, they made, you know, made that announcement, this guy just, he emailed it in. Because you are, in essence, auditioning for Correct. your next so job. So I think they're going to work as hard as they've ever worked, do the best they can, try to win a football game, try to put players in position to succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, and all along, 
you know, wearing out their network of friends. Like, hey, if you hear of an opening, obviously I'm looking. Right. You know, because right. a lot of dominoes start falling in these next couple of weeks. You oh, know? yeah. Uh, you know, TCU gets rid of Gary Patterson after 22 years. Texas Tech's looking for coach. Southern Cal, mm-hmm. LSU. And, yeah, you know, I think. I think TCU and Texas Tech are looking for different coaches than LSU and Southern Cal are. Right. And then who knows, does Nebraska job open up? There could be right. some other things that shake too. So mm-hmm. that's the other thing Scott Woodward's got to, you know, swim through. Is, True. You know. True. And, and then what happens now a lot, Clarence, a lot of guys don't want to leave their job, but the agent floats the name out there so they can get a raise. Right. All right. Okay. Well, you yeah. know, that's, but that's, that's that's part of the business. That's part of the game. Okay, that's and, a part of the and game. And you're only worth what somebody pays you. That's right. That's what you're worth. That's right. You know? So speaking of the coaching carousel and and potential replacements for Coach O, you got a couple of guys that that you like or 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 think might be. The odds on at this point as we speak. First thing, I got no inside info. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I'm not in that circle. Right. I used to be a little bit, but I'm not in that circle anymore. But I've been around forever. So, number one on my list is Lane Kiffin. Okay. And I think if he was offered that job, it'd take him all of one second to say yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I, I really believe, and I think he could recruit to Baton Rouge. He recruited the Florida Atlantic. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. Most people don't even know what city that's in, Boca right. Raton, Florida. Right. A lot of people don't know that. He recruited there. He got big-time kids there. Uh-huh. All right? So he would be number one on my list. Now, Scott Woodward does not care what I think, and I'm, <laughs> no. good, with I'm good with that. <laughs> but I think he'd have to be up there. You know, there's a lot of – you know, I'm going to throw a name out at you. Okay. It's going to hit home with you. And when I, I threw it out one night because I got tired of people asking me who did I think was the coach was going to be. Right. So it started off not as a joke but as a way to get people to stop bothering me. I said they should hire Deion Sanders. Hmm. He's recruiting like crazy at Jackson State. Yeah. Look at the national attention and money yeah. he would bring. Yeah. He Before he took the job at Jackson State, he had the largest high school football camps in the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's got a network. Right. He, and he's prime time. Right. Okay. Now, do I think he's going to get hired? No. Is he anywhere near the top of the list? No. Re- resume but, isn't, isn't deep enough. No, yet. no. Five years from now, he might be the perfect guy with a job. I don't yeah. know. But, but no. And, and but there's a lot of other names out there. And you know, you know, Lincoln Riley's the hot name this week from Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. of course, Mel Tucker's doing a great job, and he used to coach here. But let me get on that. This used to coach here and have to have a tie to LSU. That's nonsense. Nah. Dale Brown did not have a tie when nope. he came to Baton Rouge. No nope. guy Gunter, came from halfway across the country. Sue Gunter didn't have a tie. That's right. You know, uh, yeah, I mean. Nick Saban had never been to Baton Rouge when uh-huh. he accepted the job. He sent uh-huh. his wife on a house hunting mission. That was it. You know, so that doesn't matter. It matters can you recruit players, develop players, and win championships. Uh-huh. That's it. Yep. End of discussion. We'll uh, get our first break of today's edition of the Roger Cato <laughs> Show out of the way, and we'll come back and shift gears from purple and gold, talk a little blue and gold. That's next as we continue the Roger Cato Show. Stay close. Termites. Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of Alfred Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. 
But the ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Caught spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to week nine of the Roger Cato Show. Tommy Kreis and filling in for the coach this week. Tommy, let's let's move across town from uh, the southern end to the northern end up on the bluffs and talk about Southern University taking the measure of Alcorn State, 38-35. Is there anything that can reinvigorate a team more than finally beating a team that has owned you for five years in a row? Yeah, it definitely makes you feel like all the hard work paid off, the sweat, mm -hmm. and the, you know that extra couple of laps you ran, and yeah. that extra meeting, or that you looked at that tape another time. Uh -huh. You know, that's what you play sports for is to feel what they felt yeah. by finally getting over that 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 hump there, and, mm -hmm. and and that's good for the it's good for the school, it's good for the athletic department, good for the certainly conference, good for football, and yeah. yeah, and you know any you know the oldest saying in show business, I don't care what you say about me, just say something. Yeah, well, we're, we're talking about. That, you know, That's that right. accomplishment. That's right. What, one of the uh, idiosyncrasies of college athletics that I love are the ironies that pop up from time to time. Dawson Odoms, as amazing as his tenure was at Southern, again, was owned by Alcorn in recent memory. Along comes interim coach Jason Rollins, and they pulled this off. You got to feel good for a coach in a story like that. Yeah, you know, and he, he's worked his butt off. He, uh -huh. He's worked very hard. His staff has worked very hard. And Southern's got a lot of good football players. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, again, for them to get that feedback, which is success on top of the hard work, you know, I mean, it, there's no elevator to success. You got to take the stairs. That's right. Okay, so you know, these kids, I feel good for them, and hopefully, this can spark them in. Mm -hmm. What they got, Florida A and M this week. Yep. And then Jackson State, and and Deion Sanders, State. Right. and then of course the Classic. Yeah. So yeah. you know, this, this would be a, a great way to just ride out on uh -huh. a big high. Well, is that a Tommy Chrysan original? Or no, did no, you? No, oh, okay, no. okay. But it's very fitting. Yeah, it is. It There's is. No I elevator like that to one. success. You got to take, take the stairs. The stairs. That's right. You like that, huh? Oh, I love that one. <laughs> of course, now zero turnovers always increases your chances of winning. Yeah, it really does. I mean, you got to take care of the football. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's third and one, you got to pick up that first down and stay on the field. But when you don't turn it over, your chances of win go up significantly. We it's not it's happened, but there's not a lot of times when you lose the turnover battle and win the game. That's right. It can happen. It has happened. It'll happen again. Yeah. But that's that's the that's not the norm. You you mentioned how this coaching staff obviously has worked real hard to get this team where they are. It was a heck of a bounce back, meaning the week before, you suffered your worst conference loss in six years. And the very next week, you turn around and beat a team that's owned you for the last four years. Another one of those idiosyncrasies that makes college athletics the sport that we love so much. That's why you line up and play. Mm -hmm. You truly never know. That's right. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes you got a pretty good idea, but you truly never know. Right. Until you got scholarship athletes on both sides, coaches mm -hmm. making money, you know, athletic departments that are giving them the resources that they can give them, and you know, you just never know when it's going to be your day. That's right. You know, and, and on the flip side, there's going to be days when you're going to get 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 it handed to you. Get it handed you to you. Tip your hat and That's say, right. "Mama said there'd be days like this," and you move on. <laughs> And, of course, in, in the game of football, it is the only game that uses a ball that's not round, meaning that puppy can bounce any way at any time. And, you know, if, if you're lining up to return a serve in a tennis match, you know when the ball hits and bounces where it's going. Golf, when you hit it, you watch the trajectory, you know what it's going to do when it lands, but that darn pigskin 
oblong like it is, that puppy might end up anywhere at any time. This team, in, in watching this game, never trailed, but the score was tied on four different occasions. That shows a lot of heart in this team that they continued to battle all the way through. Well, you got to play 60 minutes. You know, that's mm -hmm. a coaching cliche, but it's true. Yeah. You know, you, you got to play it out, win, lose, up, down. Uh -huh. You know, you, you're, you're, you're representing your university, your family, your teammates. Mm -hmm. and you, you, I, I, sometimes I get a little annoyed when people say, well, well they played hard. Well, they were supposed to play hard. Well, look well at yeah. It. But when you play, see a team do that, that means they're on the same page with the coaches because coaches don't give up to that clock says zero zero zero. Right. I mean, we've seen coaches oh, yeah. time out. You know, time we, out. we're going to throw this hail mary <laughs> and then we're going right. to try it on side kick and we're going to get it. Right. That's how coaches think. Yeah. Well, obviously, this coaching staff has transcended that into uh -huh. the minds of their players that mm -hmm. we're going to keep playing and when they tell us the game's over, then we'll line up and shake hands. Freshman, true freshman kicker, Luke Jackson, nails a forty-seven yarder. Walk off field goal. No pressure, right? No. <laughs> There's pressure because everybody in the stadium's looking at you. Yes, sir. All the fans for both teams look yes, at you. Yes, sir. The TV cameras are looking at yes, you. Yes, sir. And they got a shot at those goal posts to see if the ball goes between the posts. Uh -huh. Okay. So yeah, that's a very high pressure situation. <laughs> and uh, you know, tip of the hat to that guy for making that field goal. And I give him confidence. Gives the coaching staff confidence. That they know they can ask him to do that again. Once you demonstrate you can do something, coaches will ask you to do it again. Uh -huh. If this team could develop a tad more consistency, they could really do some things, couldn't they? And I think Coach Rollins would, would tell you the same thing because mm -hmm. he knows he knows the recipe. Right. It's can he get all the ingredients, put, mm -hmm. put them together, and get everybody rolling. So he would know that. And I'm sure that's something he talks to his staff and the players about is, you know, we got to be more consistent. Let's don't turn it over again, and we can, be, we can beat a lot of people. Yeah. You mentioned uh, everybody in the stadium focusing strictly on you. I, uh, I have a greater appreciation for your accomplishments and, and what you did in your collegiate career as a pitcher, having had the honor of throwing out a first pitch at an LSU game. And a lot of folks never realize the teams aren't on the field. You're the only person on the field. They've got the jumbotron. Your picture's on the jumbotron. Everybody in the stadium is looking right in your face, waiting, some hoping you two hop that puppy on the way to the plate. It gave me a whole new appreciation. Did, did that ever bother you? And, and uh, to what degree? No, when I was a pitcher, it didn't bother me. And I'm lucky to throw in the collegiate level. And, you know, you, you just have to focus on what you're doing. Uh -huh. And I always looked at nobody can do anything until I throw this ball. So everybody's right. waiting on me. You know? Right. So right. I, that really never bothered me. I mean, you know, you, you know, we didn't play in front of big crowds. So if there was somebody heckling you, you heard it. Right. The other dugout would be bench jockeying you a little well, of bit. Course. You know? Of course. But, you you know, the older you get, you ain't get to a freshman, but the older you get, you, you tend to, if you do hear it, you don't admit to hearing it. Right. And uh, you just have to wear, you know, in my case, it was trying to execute every pitch that was called. Yeah. I, uh, I, I distinctly remember as I'm walking out to the mound, I'm nervous because I hadn't, I mean, this was maybe six, seven years ago, and uh, I hadn't thrown a baseball since Little League. I was a pitcher in Little League, but I hadn't thrown a ball since then. And as I'm walking to the mound, I look up on the jumbotron. There's my face on the jumbotron. I'm like, oh, Jesus. But as I get closer and closer to the mound, I realize how tall the college mound is. And then it occurs to me, dude, you're throwing downhill. You got this. I mean, go up and do what you do. And, and Kramer Robertson was, was my catcher. So um, I get on the mound, not total rubber. I look at him and I go, <laughs> and he picked it up right off the bat. So he flashes me some signals. I wave him off again. He flashes some more. All right, all right let's do this. And uh, it was a Picasso. I painted, painted the corner. He didn't have to get out of his crouch. He just, boom, boom right good. there. But, uh, man, I got to tell you, um, 
I gained a whole new appreciation <laughs> for you and, and those of your ilk and, and what you all do. Well, and, it, and I guess it's like anything else. The more you do something, the more comfortable you become with and it. The other thing, too, the difference would be, as opposed to when you threw the ball, when I threw it, they had a guy with a bat trying yeah. to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was on scholarship to hit it. Uh, yeah, and I didn't have to worry about if yeah. he hit it, you know, if, if I'm going to have to leave here carted out or, you know, with a bag of ice over my eye or whatever, whole different ball game altogether. When we come back, we've already covered purple and gold and blue and gold. Up next, black and gold. When we continue today's edition of the Roger Cador Show. Stay close. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Smart Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge because BTR is so close and convenient, they're always one step ahead rather than dead on their feet. So, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. Who says you need a vacation for a view like this? Or, I wish there was a place to get in shape. Try getting on the beaten path. Discover an ever-expanding network of trails and greenways. Some quintessential southern beauty. Or romp through the woods in a magical land between the rivers. There's more to explore than you ever imagined. Beyond the swing sets, Breck, we are more than a playground. Welcome back to week nine of the Roger Kador Show. Do not attempt to adjust your set. No, the brightness has not just gone <laughs> completely out of control. Tommy Christ and dear friend of the show and of Pelican Broadcasting, very graciously consenting to fill in for Coach this week. Trick or treat. And I can't think of a more fitting analogy, moniker, for the game against Tampa Bay. Treat. Got to win against a division opponent. Trick, oh my God, starting quarterback, Jameis Winston, tears both the ACL and the MCL. Tough outing despite a win. Yeah, I hate to see anybody get hurt. I mean, yeah. you know, these guys work too hard uh, at all levels of sports. Uh, but injuries are part of it. Yeah. But, man, you know, they've owned the Buccaneers in the regular season. Lost mm -hmm. two in the playoffs last year. You know, Tom Brady, you know, we know that story. But the Saints, I mean, wow. You know, I didn't think they'd win the game before I even knew Winston was going to be hurt. You <laughs> right. Know? And I'm thinking Jameis Winston, Tom Brady, I think we're going to put five bucks on Brady. You yeah, know? and, and but, not to mention you've got uh, Leonard Fournette and, yeah. and we knew Gronk well, was, was Super, probably. Brady's Super Bowl champs. Well, I mean, yeah. Come on. So, you know, but you just got to give the Saints credit. And, you know, mm -hmm. he gets a lot of credit, but maybe not enough, and I'll say why. Okay. Sean Payton. Yeah, he won a Super Bowl. We get it. Right. But – Towards the end of Bridges' career, they went 5-0 and with Teddy Bridgewater filling in. Mm -hmm. Okay, Taysom Hill has got a winning record as a quarterback. Right. Trevor Simeon has to come in when Winston gets hurt uh -huh. and win the game. Right. I mean, it, it, you know, I hate when people say it's all about the system, but for the Saints, it is about the system. But the key is 
Sean Payton, we talked about this, knows the limitations of his quarterback. Oh, he yeah. knew Drew Brees couldn't throw the ball down the field at right. the end of his career, so he didn't call that play. Uh -huh. He put Taysom Hill in or whatever. So he knew what Simeon could do. Mm -hmm. He knew what plays he could call that would allow Simeon to be successful. Right. Just like he was doing with Winston. Uh -huh. He knew what he could do to let Winston be successful. Because uh -huh. if your quarterback's successful, your chances of winning a football game go up a good bit. So I think, you know, Sean Payton with the interchangeable parts, I think he deserves a lot of credit. Oh, but definitely. the players still got to do it. The offensive line has stepped up. Mm -hmm. You know, the defense is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And if there's a better football player than Demario Davis in the NFL, I, I, I need somebody. I don't, I, I don't to talk know to his me. name. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they can't, mm -hmm. you know, but man, this guy, wow. Wow. What a football player he is and a great person. But, mm -hmm. you know, so no, this Saints team is. Hard to figure, but they're five and two, mm -hmm. half game behind the Bucks, which is really a game a, a, a game ahead because they they beat them head up and they got to play again later in the year. Right. So I mean they're in a good spot. The Saints mm -hmm. are in a good spot because more so in college on any given Sunday, anybody in that NFL can win. That's fifty three guys making a lot of money and coaches making a lot of money. That's right. It is. Ve I remember sitting right here in the restaurant talking to Michael Lewis, the beer man from the Saints. Right. Year, a couple of years ago, he was here to be on a show, and I remember Michael Lewis telling me, people don't realize how hard it is to win a football game. Yeah. You line up, they line up, they got referees, we got 60 minutes to see who's walking off as a win. It's hard to win a football game. Yeah. It's hard to win a high school football game. Yeah. So, and in the NFL, it's, it's the hardest. Oh, yeah. Those other doubt. guys are NFL players. There's only 32 teams with a 53-man roster. Mm -hmm. That means those guys are good. Well, we have highlights from uh, the Dome, so if you will, guys in the truck, be so kind. You can roll us highlights as we continue our conversation. It was uh, understanding it's Halloween, and whether you buy into it or not, strange things happen. I thought it was particularly ironic that a former LSU product in back home in Louisiana is the guy that cost us our starting quarterback for the rest of the season. Yeah, Devin White, I mean, obviously he did, had no intention to hurt oh, yeah. Winston, but just the way Winston's leg planted and, you know, Devin White's job is to get him on the ground. Yeah. Uh, and it happened. It was also a cool story to see Grayson, the wide receiver, who was a track star. Right. At Never LSU. played college went football. Went to Rumble, so he's basically in his hometown. Yeah. And uh, went to the pro day. Uh-huh. And when they saw the scouts saw that speed, they said, well, if this boy can catch a football, we got to Speed kills. And he caught a touchdown in his hometown. Yeah. Went to high school. Great story. 15 minutes away at Rumble High School. From Great the story. Dome. That was a really – and he caught it from a guy named Tom Brady. So, yeah, you know, there's a couple layers there. Yeah, but, that's hey, right. you got to give the Saints credit. You know, they're five, six-point favorites this weekend against the Falcons. Mm -hmm. uh, good chance to win that game. And, you know, trade deadline, by the time people see this show, it will have passed. passed. It was Tuesday afternoon, 3 o'clock Louisiana time. Some people thinking the Saints might try to make a move. What is, your, people, what is your gut tell you? I think they're going to stay packed with yeah. the quarterback situation. I'm not saying they're going to make another move. They right. can use a wide receiver. But, right. um, no, I think the quarterback situation is going to stay packed. Because they like Ian Book. Even though he's not ready yet, they mm -hmm. think he can get ready. And I think Taysom Hill can come back. Simeon has started 25 football games in the NFL. Just so it's been not a while like since the yeah, last. It's just not, so it's not like he's never done it. So now right. he knows he's the guy. He can work all week knowing mm -hmm. you know he's got the keys to the call. We mentioned earlier about, quote, the system, how Sean Payton has perfected the art of plug and play. Somebody goes down, we plug somebody else into, into that hole. We continue to play on uh, with a, a relatively high degree of success. All that being said, is this going to be his greatest challenge yet? Could be. Uh, I think he would agree that it's a challenge. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's his greatest challenge, but, you know, filling Drew Brees' shoes is a challenge. Yeah. You know, and they, they've worked to do that. You know, Mickey Loomis deserves a lot of credit in the front office. Oh, yeah. The I mean, they've worked wonders with the salary cap. 
and we'll see if they do anything with the you know the November two deadline. But right. you know, so no, I, I think he he views it all as a challenge, and this would be even a little bit more. But it's all about getting players in position to be successful. Mm -hmm. No different than if you and I are coaching eight year old youth football. Right. If we got the guy that's really fast, well, we got to get him the ball. Got to him the ball. That speed. Yeah. Got to okay? get him the ball. Uh, we got a guy that can really catch. That's who we're going to throw it to. Uh huh. You know, so it's about putting people in position to be successful. Sean Payton's very good at that. How far do you think the, quote, Trevor and Taysom show can take this team? You know, defense is very good. Uh, you know, getting Mark Ingram back a plus. Mm -hmm. uh, that was an emotional lift because you know, everybody likes that guy. Definitely. You know, if they can get Michael Thomas back, and I hadn't heard anything on that, or maybe add a wide receiver with that trade deadline, you know, or get some of these other guys to step up. I mean, you know, if, if they can get to the playoffs, mm -hmm. then anything can happen. Yeah. What do you think the first thing when he awoken, or, uh, awakened this morning? What was the first thing that went through Trevor Simeon's head? I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. I better get to the office. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. If he didn't there. sleep there from the night Yeah, before. no. He, he, I mean, he get, he's been around. He gets it. Yeah. I mean, he knows what it takes. He's seen what the people have been very successful in front of him as a backup. Mm -hmm. He's seen what it takes to get the job done right. at that level. Uh -huh. And I think it'll be an advantage to him knowing he's the guy. Right. You know, when Winston goes down the other day, hey, Trevor, get loose, you're in the game. Right. Okay, yeah, he's prepared, he's ready, but in the real, you're a human being. You, you know well, that yeah. unless Winston gets hurt, uh -huh. he's, been, he's, he's the quarterback. Yeah. But now he approaches it, the rest of the team approaches it, that, hey, I'm the guy. And you got to make some extra throws, get some timing down with some receivers. You got to do it, you know, and, uh, you know, be a leader, which most quarterbacks are, if not all. So right. I think he's, I mean, He's the backup quarterback. Sean Payton wouldn't have him there if Sean didn't have a level of confidence. Yeah. Of course, now, uh, not to diminish his performance in any way, shape, or form, but the Bucks hurt themselves with some very costly penalties. Uh, and the a true, lot of penalties. The true Murphy's Law says if something can, in fact, go wrong, it will pick the most inopportune time to do so. And they certainly had some some heart to heart conversations with Mr. Murphy yesterday. You don't expect to see that from a Tom Brady operated team. Well, and you know, penalties happen. Coaches don't. And penalties sometimes coach understands a penalty. They don't mind aggressiveness, whatever. But right. stupid penalties you don't want. You don't jump no. off sides. You know, yeah. you, you can't do that when the ball's right in front of you. you. You move when the ball moves. And some other things, you know, that, that's what gets coaches. I mean, they, they realize the tackle's going to get. They'd rather the tackle get called for holding than the quarterback have his head taken off. Yeah. Okay. They, they, yeah. They're okay with that. Mm -hmm. But stupid penalties, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct, jumping off sides, and false starts. Starts. Yeah, they, they just can't stomach that. Nor can they stomach turnovers. Mm -hmm. And the Bucks had a lot of turnovers. But credit the Saints defense for that. And also give credit to the offense and Trevor, as all good teams do. When you commit those turnovers, three of them, Saints generated 16 points off that. Yeah, you you gotta you, when you get opportunity. If so they're going to give you the football, you need points. Make them pay. Yeah, make them pay for it. That's a double-edged sword. You, uh -huh. you demoralize them, plus you put some points on your side of the scoreboard. How much better can this defense get? They're really good. Uh, clean up a couple of penalties. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, the ball, everybody talks about pass interference. Well, that's because everybody throws it 50 times now. Well, yeah. When you and I were younger, if they threw it 22 times, we called that an air show. Right. Okay? Right. Uh, but it's different now. So you're going to have penalties because these <laughs> receivers are talented and mm -hmm. you got your jobs to keep them from catching the football. Right. But uh, I think this defense, Dennis Allen done a great job with that defense for many, many years. He, you know, and when you got Demario Davis, you got they got a good front, you know, with Cam Jordan and the rest of them guys up mm -hmm. on the front line. You got good guys in the secondary, and they're deep. Defense wins championships. Just oh, yeah. keep that in mind. That's you know, right. You got to run the football and play defense. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a better chance of winning the championship than those that don't do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll take our final break of today's show. We'll come back, put that big pretty bow on this puppy, and wrap up week nine of the Roger Cador Show only on the Pelican. Stay close.
Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of Alfred Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Hot spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to the final segment of week nine of the Roger Kador Show. And no, don't attempt to adjust your set. It is not Roger Kador. Our dear friend, Tommy Chrysan, uh, very graciously uh, consenting on somewhat short notice to, to fill in for Roger Kador. Obviously, as a former collegiate pitcher, big time sports guy, you've been keeping an eye on, on the World Series. Finally, and, and heading in, most of the hype was pitching staff against the bats. Atlanta, the arms, Houston, the bats. Finally, game five, the bats for Houston come alive. They did, but, you know, Atlanta, you know, before the playoffs started, I've been keeping both eyes on it, not one eye. Right. You know, I told some people, you know, Ronnie Rance and I do these videos three mornings a week on Facebook and YouTube. Uh -huh. I said, don't sleep on the Braves. They can pitch. Right. Okay. And, you know, their manager played at the University of New Orleans. Uh -huh. Third base coach Ron Washington still has a home in New Orleans. He's okay. from New Orleans. Huh. Um, you know, so, you know, don't sleep on the Braves. They can pitch. But the Astros have such a good lineup. I knew they couldn't. You know, I didn't think they could keep them down. Down forever forever and right. then of course game five you mm -hmm. know nine runs and boom you get Astros win and the ability to go back home right. for the Tuesday night game six so you know it's been a fun series mm -hmm. it's been a lot of excitement you see why these two teams are in the World yeah. Series because they got hitting they got pitching they got go both got great coaches uh -huh. uh, managers with, with Dusty Baker who's a dear friend of Roger Kadar's and, mm -hmm. and of course Brian Snickers done a great job Snickers sons one of the hitting coaches for the Astros did you really? know that yeah did so, not know that yeah so you know so you got two teams that didn't have the best record during the season but they played the best in the playoffs which right. is a key in baseball it's you know it's when you play like Coach Kadar used to say hey if we can get hot down the stretch in the uh -huh. strike then we're going to get to the postseason that's right we're not going to get to the postseason by something we do on March 15th. True. You know, or, or same thing with LSU. All them years uh -huh. when, when Coach Burtman or Coach Maneri, they, they get hot down the stretch and then you got postseason success. So the Braves and the Astros are an example of that. Uh, it's great to see full stadiums, mm -hmm. uh, the big crowds. And, and I've always said in the World Series, every pitch matters. Oh, yeah. Every pitch. It's oh, yeah. not like that game on June 2nd where you're yeah. like, oh, well, whatever. Yeah, let me go take a walk. You right. know, I'll come back some right. the score is later. Right. You know, so it's really, really been a fun series. And, you know, obviously Braves lead three games to two going into Tuesday night. And mm -hmm. if, if the Astros win, game seven, two of the best words in sports, would be Wednesday night back yeah. in Houston. So uh, it's going to be curious. I will be watching Tuesday night. I seem to remember Freed is up for Atlanta, the lefty. And Louis Garcia is throwing for the yeah, Astros. Yeah, and, and Freed was hit pretty hard in game yeah, two. Yeah, but Garcia uh, is uh, who, makes you seasick with that. Why? Oh, who, who, who do you like in that matchup? Got to go to meatandpotatoesusa.com <laughs> to find out. A money Shame back guarantee. Well, you go buy that pick. <laughs> no, when you see this, it'll already be there. Right. So I can say who I like. Because by the time people see this, oh, yeah. it'll be, it'll be I, I think the Braves win tonight. Okay. Can they win two? No, the Braves just need to win. Oh, no, no, just one. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, no, I so think the, the Braves Astros, wrap it up tonight. You don't think the Astros can take two? 
They can, but I think, uh, but you know, uh, you ask me who I think like tonight. I like it. Well, last. yeah, but yeah. it's not out of the question. You know, it's like it's out of the question that LSU can beat Bama. Right. It ain't out of the question <laughs> that Houston can win too. <laughs> All right, let, let, let's shift gears because we would be remiss in our duties, and it would deny you, as a Southeastern alum, uh, the opportunity to to tip your hat to your old school, number eight. In the, in the FCS coaches poll, and they continue to roll after beating McNeese. Coaching staff there, obviously, these young men are buying what the coaching staff is selling. Well, you know, I got the best player in the country, the quarterback Kelly, who's a Lafayette mm -hmm. product. Right. You know, before going to Arkansas, and it didn't work. But, but Coach Selfo, you know, I played against him in college baseball. He was a catcher at Louisiana Monroe, then, Get known, out. then known as Northeast Louisiana University. Right. He was a great guy. In fact, he hit a couple of big home runs to beat us in Hammond one time. Not off of me. I was about to ask. No, I was, was in the bullpen chewing on sunflower <laughs> seeds. But, <laughs> but no, he was, he, was a, he was a very good catcher, a very good baseball player back then. Uh, so he's done a, a very good job with the Southeastern football team. They have benefited from the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. They benefited from, you know, some junior college guys. And, right. And they put a pretty darn good roster together. It's just unfortunate they can't get more people to go to the games. Yeah. I really wish they could, you know, Strawberry Stadium is not that big. I really right. wish they could fill that thing up, especially with the quality of the team that they have. It's got to mean a lot to the city of Hammond that – that's been through so much as of late. And, and I was one of those that was of the opinion, come on, Hammond, you guys have got it. You, you, you got a heck of a thing going here. You got to go and support them. But then I start thinking, well, you know, with all they've been through as of late, uh, disposable income, family obligations, rebuilding homes, businesses, et cetera, et cetera, Got to give them a little bit of leeway in that regard for not showing up to Strawberry Stadium as much as you would like to see them? Yeah, that, that's definitely a factor. There's no question about that. But, you know, Southeastern's got a lot of alumni in Baton Rouge area, mm -hmm. a lot of alumni in the New Orleans area. Uh, and, you know, in, in over on the North Shore, the, the whole covenant Mandeville Slidell area. Right. You would just think, you know, more people would make, the, you know, who are basically an hour away right. would make the effort to get over to Strawberry Stadium and, mm -hmm. and, and support that team. Uh, I know a lot of people do. And look, mm -hmm. A lot of the former football players, especially guys that were playing football when I played baseball, right. I see it on Facebook every week. They, uh -huh. They're all at the game or they cook for the team on Wednesday night, right. this kind of stuff. So they got a lot of support, uh -huh. but it would be nice to see more. You mentioned uh, Coach Selfo taking advantage of the transfer portal. Do you see this as potentially long-term success, or is it a case of we'll just have to wait and see how it all shakes out? At Southeastern? Uh -huh. I think Southeastern is in the same boat as Nichols, McNeese, obviously all in that same conference, right. where you know, if, if you get a few things to go your way, you're mm -hmm. going to be really good every third or fourth year. Right. And then you're going to have to kind of restock the roster, as they say. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've seen the success. Tim Rebo, a former teammate of mine, has had at Nichols. And, right. And, you know, Frank Wilson's now at McNeese, and he's going to do a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, Northwestern State has struggled for a few years. But, right. you know, they're not that far away. So I think it's a you're not going to be a top eight or nine team like Southeastern is right now every mm -hmm. single year. Right. But when you get those players and you got the good coaching staff, you need to take advantage of it, and that, that's what they've done. So how is it then that teams like Youngstown, teams like South Dakota State, the perennial powers in that regard, how do they manage to pull that off so little more, A little more tradition, a little more, you know, a rich history. Right. Um, you know, very small towns they're in, which Hammond's not a big town. but Right. Only, know, only game in town. Yeah, so, I mean, they, you know, and they – I mean, they've just got that tradition, that power, just like some high schools are good every year no matter what. Maybe right. not perfect every year. Right. But those are programs that are established. And when you got kids growing up wanting to go to a school mm -hmm. when they're younger, I want to go be a Southeastern Lion or I want to yeah. be a Makes Southern a Jaguar. Yeah. I want to be a Northwestern State Demon. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you need. You need to start it with them young kids and, you know, get them in your football camps and get them wanting to wear your colors one day. Coaching Tommy Chrysan anywhere in the future? For who, me? Yeah. 
Well, no, I, I, I do a lot of pitching lessons, uh, private lessons for people, and I'm involved. Why'd you never, why'd you never coach? I coached a lot in summer ball, travel ball, uh -huh. uh, summer high school ball. I, I was a coach coming out of high school. My degree is in education. Okay. And then I shifted to recreation. I was a recreation director at the city of Covington for seven and a half years. Awesome. Which which led me to being a part-time radio guy, which kind of, you know, Trey Blossman too. first hired me in radio, so you can blame him. But, <laughs> no, but no, I, I deal with, right now I'm coaching down in Ascension Parish in a couple of different, in a, a fall program that I've been involved with for years. Right. We had 90-something kids out there, and we just trying to teach them baseball so they can make their high school team. Right. And I'm also on the board of directors for Ascension Parish Recreation Baseball, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm at the park a lot for that, too. Right. So I'm not too far away, but private lessons I don't do quite as much as I used to do. Right. But but I still I got several ongoing right now. Can you say enough about the job that Deion Sanders uh, has done at Jackson State and bringing national attention and awareness to HBCU football? You can't measure it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you got Deion Sanders doing a TV commercial with Nick with Saban. Nick Saban? I don't need to say anything more. Yeah. I, I don't think there's ever been a, a, another SWAT coach Not that did that a TV commercial with, with Nick Saban or Dabo no. Swinney or, no. or whomever. No. Okay, well, that, that is going to help the conference. It's going to help HBCUs. It's going to help these kids that go to play at Jackson State or somewhere else. You can't measure it. I just hope it doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah. It uh, is something that the conference has needed for a while uh, because, quite frankly, um, there's been a huge void there from, I don't know, I guess a 30-year span where you had the Eddie Robinsons of the world, the Marino Chasms, the W.C. Gordons. They were showmen uh, and they were salesmen. And uh, those, I, those, I days, great those days are long gone. Tell it quick. Involves a swag. Uh-huh. 1980. Okay. I'm pitching against Jackson State. Right. At Smith Wells Stadium, uh -huh. double A stadium of the Mets at the time. Right. In Jackson, Mississippi. Guess who the home plate umpire was? Eddie Robinson? No. Marino Casa? No. Don't know. Walter Payton. Get out. Walter Payton and his brother Eddie was up in the bases. Because back then they didn't make enough, you know. Right. They were just trying to make a few bucks to wow. get a pizza or a beer or whatever. But right. Walter Payton called the balls and strikes. And the opposing pitcher that day against me, uh -huh. I got the win, a guy named Old Cam Boyd. Dennis get Boyd. out. Dennis Wow. But my whole point is, nowadays, you, you know, we talk about Deion Sanders doing a TV commercial with right. Nick Saban. We're, you're not going to have an NFL Hall of Fame running back calling balls and strikes. <laughs> All right. We got, we got 30 seconds left. Tell us more, uh, or again, if you will, about your podcast and meatandpotatoesusa.com. Talking Sports with TK is available on all your major platforms and websites, meatandpotatoesusa.com. And every Sunday night, I do Hold the Rope Radio with Dan Canterbury and Skip Bertman That's on right. 1045 ESPN. Check that out. Uh -huh. Meatandpotatoesusa.com. There's it is right there. Check it out. Meatandpotatoesusa.com. It has been a privilege and a my pleasure. Pri my privilege. And, uh, it's been fun, my friend. My privilege. Thank let's, you, Clarence. Let's, uh, make it Thank a you, point. Roger, for calling me. Let, let's make it a point that uh, we don't let this much time go by. Well, y'all got my phone in number. the future. Okay. All right. That sounds like a plan. On behalf of the man. Tommy Chrysan, the crew in the truck, Katie True and Jonathan Poche, and of course, floor director extraordinaire, Marty. I'm Clarence Bugs. We'll see you next week for another edition of the Roger Cador Show. We'll see you then. As usual.